Uh, strong hits are probably only active for a few frames. So it's active for two frames. Three, That's it? There's no late hit? Two, this one, is active from 8 to go. 10. There's no late hit to pilot back here? Uh, I, let me let me read a little bit further. Okay, but. yeah, yeah. Anyway, we are now getting into the actual match at hand, and this is one thing actually that we didn't even touch on was the ledge trapping issue. Where <laughs> on the one hand, Utopian Ray is such a fantastic ledge trapper. Yeah, no, just two frames. Just two frames. Well, eight, nine, ten, three frames. Okay. Still, that's like. Yeah. Yeah. So technically speaking, uh, if they hit it at the if the yeah. timings align. Uh, Zelda can actually beat out some of the Palu's moves. Yeah, that's impressive. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be super influential here. I feel like these two wouldn't really try and box it out, you know? Um, Ray in general is not really a boxy type of player. Like, he's not going to get in your face and apply pressure that way. Instead, he's going to gain stage advantage like we're seeing right here and then try and just push it as much as he can. That's going to hit on the platform. Yeah, he's forced to shield all of that, and his shield is down to a nub. These forward airs, actually, uh, from Utopian Ray are working out really well because they're, the, they're just so fast. Like, these fast fall forward airs seem to be the best way to sort of just pick apart the holes in uh, like this wall that Zero to Nun's trying to put on. That should be it. Yeah, going off the stage for the neutral air. That's one thing that Zelda can avoid a lot of ledge trapping with the help of that phantom. But at the same time, it takes time to charge up. And if the Zelda's a little bit too overconfident that their opponent isn't going to approach them, that's an overconfidence that can be exploited, as we just saw. And now Utopian Ray is ooh, getting even more damage, and while he's already ahead by an entire stock. Ooh. Weak forward air to grab. Truest of combos, clearly. <laughs> he air dodged every single one of those up air hits. That's actually really good timing on Zero to None's part. It's pretty impressive. He actually shield. He maybe could have upbeat out of shield on that situation. Oh, great up smash. And he even used the Phantom to, like, fake him out, you know, put, give him cover. That uh, Utopian Ray went to approach him, and he didn't even realize Ooh. he was charging that up until it was too late. And right there, we see the invincibility from Nehru's love helping out against Explosive Flame. I think it's also it's because like, he, like, reflects it. It's like, who would win an unstoppable force and an immovable object? Yeah. Ralph equals dad. Aw. I just realized it's time. Now, at some point, I want to talk to his ultimate and find out the exact how why her phantom explodes sometimes. What do you mean? Like when she's charging it? So if you hit her. Is it every time you hit her? Yes. Every time she's charging her up, she's vulnerable for the But, like, what about when, she's, when she already leaves it alone and she starts running away and doing her own thing? Uh, if you hit him really hard. Okay. Well, yeah. as we see, Zero to None taking uh, another stock loss for him. Utopian Ray is looking pretty confident right here. And this is the Nair train. Actually, Zero to None had avoided so all of that up, up until that point. And then one time in the last stock, he gets hit by a neutral air. And it's now he's already at 67%. If he can close out a stock here, if he can manage to complete this edge guard, he keeps himself in the running. But every time that Ray gets back to stage, he does more damage. And this game just feels farther and farther out of Zero's reach. Wow, that get-up attack. I can't believe that actually worked. I love that recovery from Ray. And uh, is he going to go all the way up for the chase? Another beautiful air dodge. <laughs> it was just out of range for those up airs. Ooh, just and, kept trying. And the beefy up B, one of my favorite things to see Zelda's do. Ah, The roll read, though, is all it's going to take. Utopian Ray takes game one. Really dominantly on the horn. It felt like zero to none's game plan. Just he didn't get to do his game plan. He would get hits in when he could, but I've seen zero to none just control the pace so well, and he just wasn't able to do that. Topian Ray was not giving him a chance. So in terms of stage, uh, 
Actually, the fans were Lilat and Smashville. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if maybe Kalos? Or it could just be PS2 again. Three, oh, Nova. Nova. Interesting. Uh, I mean, so like this is kind of one of those stages where it's just like a default-ish Palu uh, counter pick. Now, I'm not sure if Zelda actually stands to gain anything from this stage, but like, it's like, hey, let me make her recovery more difficult, you know? So. However, those platforms can help mm -hmm. out. Uh, yeah, it's mostly about just the teleport with the slopes beneath the ledge. Because if she goes, uh, if she rides any of them, she just auto dies. So it's just like, yeah, let me just make it more difficult. Hey, it's like, you know, you take like a 5% chance that you win the set. You know? Yeah. Although, Zelda also has a teleport recovery. So yeah, but she can uh, do it more. She, I mean, if she rides it as well, she'll also die. Wow, that that angle though, like the, just the way he t Zelda does not have the greatest airspeed, but he found just this perfect trajectory Ooh. past all of those hits. I think he messed up that backer. That was definitely supposed to be. And that would have been the stock. Could be big. And up throw is not going to do it quite yet. But probably the next grab to a back throw will finish him off. And that's going to be it right there. Yep. yep. Topian Ray looking, I think, actually better than game one in terms of how healthy he is in this first stock. Oh, beautiful job right there. That's something that we've seen Zero to None do a bunch. And it just really works out where that phantom access cover and the opponent, you know, sort of with their options limited, they forget about how dangerous Zelda's raw smash attacks are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was, ah. <laughs> I realize it's just a tomahawk grab, but with a character who's so floaty as Zelda, <laughs> it looks so cool, you know? Like Fox Tom Hawk grab, it's like, all right, you know, it's a Fox Tom Hawk grab. But Zelda, she had to take like five minutes to get back down to it's the like, ground. Is she gonna land? What is she gonna do? You know, on the whole, even though this game started off really good for Utopian Ray, uh, that, I don't know, he, Zutanon barely got touched at all during that mm -hmm. entire sequence, and now he's. It's not quite even top. I mean, he is at 99. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, he should be dead. I, I think he was this just too far. Though. Like, he's he went. He definitely, like, went for it, but he was too far for it. <gasps> His air dodges on those off bears have been so good. He's really been scouting out the timing uh, that Choking Ray is throwing him out. Bit of stage positioning. Finally, let's see whether Zero to None can make big things happen with it. All right, back to neutral once again. But given tar time, Ooh. like, once Zelda has Phantom, it's no longer neutral, though, you know? It's, I have to wait. Although, not really, because she has a reflector. Like, if she wants to, like, read or, like, go in to, for that burst range, throw out the reflector, well, uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword, because, like, if she just waits, you have to, like, go for it in that last bit. Yeah, and I'm worth not sure on the exact hitbox that the Phantom has when it's being reflected because, you know, the strongest or the biggest part of it is at its slash at the end. Yeah, uh, you can reflect him at any point, though. See, okay. Yeah? No, I was just commenting that the Phantom uh, oh, okay. exploded that time because he got hit by the back air. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know how many hits he needs, but he definitely, like, falls apart. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, this game is actually super even now. This is Great in pressure. Zero to None's favor, and he still is the, he's keeping it going. Great job of reading that counter, and Phantom once again has been unleashed. It's over and over, an onslaught. We haven't really seen the counter. I feel like, uh, sorry, the reflector. <gasps> Ooh. Not gonna be it. Not yet. I like this goes for a raw back throw, hoping to catch some bad DI. Another back throw is not going to do it, though. Zero to none all the way on the corner. 127% on his body and like a shark above him. Topian Ray is just barely out of range. Threatening with those moves to million yeah. parries. 
actually unfortunately lands Ooh. a sour hit of the fair. And now he actually follows through. Amazing job landing on the platform and able to catch the air dodge. Beautiful stuff from Utopian Ray. He's going to be moving on into winner's bracket. Uh, zero to none is in losers, but he can do some pretty nutty things in there. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. I feel like he's gotten to top eight through losers before. Has he gotten top eight? I, he's top eight before.